guys, how's it going? Today I want to show you how I pinch back my seedlings. And I recently showed you how I thin my seedlings with these snapdragons right here. And right after I did that, they just shot up. They've put on so much growth because all of a sudden they weren't competing with each other. They all had enough room to grow. So now they're at a stage where I need to start pinching them back, which is basically just a method of pruning where you remove the top growth of the plant, um, which will create a more well-branched, denser plant and oftentimes will increase your yields. So like in this case with the snapdragons, I'll get a lot more flowers from pinching them back. So when you pinch them, the plant has a lot more energy to put into a really strong root system and newer branches. And you you can do it at this stage like when they're in seedling young stage of the plant and you can do it several times along the way which will create even more of a dense plant and probably even higher yields and pinching back is great for a lot of different things like snapdragons tomatoes basil coleus um, there are some things you want to avoid like delphiniums and larkspur oftentimes though you can find that information on the back of your seed packet like this is the snapdragon seed packet for uh, this one right here and it says to pinch back to one and a half to two inches when the seedlings are about three to four inches tall. Um, so you can really find a lot of information back there. If not, you can always Google it. And the last thing, when you are pinching back plants, you can use your fingers because that's how it got its name. Most of the time when you're pinching back plants, they're on the type of plants that have really soft stems. So you can easily like just pop the top off with your fingernails. But if you have a lot to do, I find it easier to use your snips. Um, so if you are using a cutter like this, you do want to make sure to sterilize it either between trays or between varieties so that you don't accidentally spread disease if you have any of that going on. So let's actually pinch one back. I'm going to show you an example right here. Um, the first set of leaves that you see right here, these are called the cotyledons and these are not true leaves. These are the first leaves that you see after the seed has germinated and broken through the seed shell. Um, you want to follow the stem up to at least above the first set of true leaves, which is what we have right here. So I can either prune here, which you prune right above that set of leaves, or you can follow it up further. I kind of just think it depends on where you want your plant to start branching. So I am going to cut this one right above that first set of leaves. So you take your pruners or your fingernails and just cut it pretty close to the leaf junction there, just like that. Um, and that's probably where I'm going to take all of these just because these are so tall. Now let's take a look at this right here. If we pop over to this uh, flat, this one's got our cotyledons right here. Follow the stem up. We have our first set of leaves and these are fairly short. So I'm just gonna take off just the tip right here, just like that. And then I also have an example. Let me rearrange here real quick because I cut one of these back about a week ago so I can show you what it looks like when the plant is producing new branches. So I don't know why I randomly chose this one right here, but I cut this one back and I was so happy to see the growth because I really wanted to show you an example of what it looks like when it's sending out new branches. So I cut my growth, my uh, main stem off right above this set of leaves and then you can see the two new sets. So there'll be two new branches that come out from a, right where that cut was made. And this is the whole point. When we pinch off our plants, we want them to create two new branches. When those branches are a little bit more formed, you can pinch them again to create even more branches. And really it creates just this really nice full plant. I see it especially helpful like with coleus and basil, like those type of foliage plants to keep pinching those back to create this really nice dense plant. And then for plants like the snapdragons here, the more branches we have, the more flowers we're going to have. Now, if you were not to pinch these at all, they would likely get very tall, a little bit leggy. They may produce a couple of branches, but they'll produce them usually higher up on the stem, which will create more of a top heavy plant, uh, which if you have any wind or anything like that, it can topple over a little bit easier. When you have pinched back plants that are denser and wider at the base, they're a lot stronger. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch back all of these plants and show you what it looks like in the end. Um, and I know it's a very hard thing to do to cut plants back like that, but it's so healthy for your plants and it will create a better plant in the end. So both of the flats are done. They look really good and I'm really excited to see what kind of growth they put on. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about, actually a couple of things. So I do have a fan set on low that kind of oscillates near these plants. And I think that is so vital. Airflow is really vital to the health of your seedlings, but having that constant kind of like this kind of action going on your plants helps them create a really strong stem. Um, so that's important to have on like almost from the very beginning when they start coming up. And the second thing is fertilizer. I have been fertilizer 
utilizing these along the way. Um, so I was just gonna show you how I do that and what I use. I've been using the Espoma Start Fertilizer and you use um, two to three doses per gallon of water. So I have um, one gallon of water sitting here in this can. So I just thought I would show you how I mix it up. You do three doses and there's no need to, since this is a starter fertilizer, you don't have to dilute it like you see in a lot of the guides. So I'm just gonna swish it around a little bit, make sure it's nice and mixed in there. I didn't fill this watering can all the way up so I could do this <laughs> and not make a big mess. And these really don't need water right now, but basically, I mean, I just water them like you would normally water. Just make sure that that soil is nice and saturated. And I make sure to never let these dry out 100%. Like I always make sure like the soil surface will be maybe a little bit dry, but underneath there's still some moisture. So since these don't need watering right now, I'll wait until this evening um, when they probably will need it and I will give them some of this fertilizer water. I've been fertilizing about every week to 10 days and they seem to re respond really well to that. And we're getting really close to the point this spring to where I can probably move these out to the greenhouse and start harden hardening them off and then finally get them planted out in the landscape. So I'm really excited excited to give you guys some progress updates on these. I think they're going to be so beautiful when they bloom. I'm so excited because I've never actually started snapdragons from seed before. So I've done a lot of other flower seeds, but I've never started these. So this has been a really fun experiment. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.